In this video, we are looking at Reshaper, which is a Burp extension available in the Burp BAP Store. It's a really interesting extension that allows us to apply conditionals to traffic going through Burp and take a large number of actions uh, based on that. Now, I'm not, we're not going to look at all of the conditionals and actions, what they call the whens and the thens. In this video, I encourage you to explore them. I'll probably use a few in future videos as needs arrive or sorry, arise. In this case, we're just going to look at a very simple example. So a common thing when dealing with apps with quite a bit of client side analytics, right? So typically these are JavaScript files baked in to the app that um, are sometimes a little aggressive in terms of the data that they extract from the DOM in the browser. And there may be situations where these frameworks pose a security risk because they're taking information well beyond what they uh, should be taking from the user. So one thing you might want to do is look at session tokens or other sensitive data that probably should not be going to a third party uh, analytics service. You know, certainly not the session tokens because that would allow them to hijack user sessions. Uh, and so it'd be very helpful if you could set up a rule to actually flag all of that traffic that's going out to a third party. So in this case, we're not really going to do that. I'm just going to use the user's password as an example. In fact, I'm just going to use the password, uh, password 1234 as an example. And we're going to ask the question, um, can we flag when password 1234 as a request, regardless of where it's going, you know, goes through burp? So we have our first, well, we have our, a rule here and we can add more rules if we want to. Uh, but we only need one. We're going to give it a name. I'm just going to call it look for password in request because that's what it's doing. The whens starts with the event direction, which is the request, which is what we want. Um, then what do we want to do? We would like matches text. Uh, so I'm going to add that and under matches text, um, source message value is going to be the request body. So I'm going to select request body and we are looking for uh, parameters. Actually, we'll just look for text that uh, contains password one, two, three, four. I think that should work. I actually haven't tested this yet. So I'm assuming that's going to work. What does validate do? Does that validate it? Hope so. <laughs> um, now we need to apply our action. So how do we want our attention to be drawn to this? So in looking at the documentation, I saw two uh, very handy actions that we could take, some thens, if you will. One is a comment, which uh, presumably adds uh, an inline comment if you're looking at the proxy history. So uh, under proxy history, if I scroll over here, you'll see there's a comment column. I typically don't make much use of it. Some people do. We are going to use it for the purpose of this video, obviously. Um, what comment are we going to add? The password is here. Great comment. Um, okay, so we click validate and that adds it to this table here, which is, uh, which is nice. Uh, and then I also noticed that there was highlight. So we would also like to highlight it to really draw our attention. So I click add on highlight. Uh, what color is really going to pop out? Probably like yellow. I mean, nothing else is, is colored, so it should be really easy to see. Click validate. There we go. Okay. Um, this looks like it should work. Uh, I hope it works. Um, one thing to look out for is I noticed the enabled button is down here in the bottom right. So I'm going to click that. I'm guessing that save makes these persistent. Um, I clicked save. Um, it, um, there's no obvious way to export these rules. Uh, granted, I haven't really looked in the settings yet. Um, oh, but there is import and there is export. Okay. Refresh list. Look at that. Isn't that handy? All right, I should have looked around a little bit more first, but you can export uh, the rules, you can import them, uh, which is always a handy feature when you have a system like this, especially if like me, you often move to different environments. Uh, so very handy to have. And the logs here, uh, maybe we want to look back there for, for matches. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is just type in password without the one, two, three, four, and I'm going to click log in. And uh, that shouldn't have done anything in the tool, but we should at least see it in the proxy history. So I'm going to filter here. Actually, the filter is good. I just need to scroll all the way up to the top. And there's that login request. And there's password as I typed in. And there is nothing special 
about this request in history, nothing that makes it stand out. But if I type one, two, three, four, then what happens? I click it and look at that. It works just as intended. Isn't that great? So we have this request here that is highlighted. And if I scroll to the comment column, we can see that it says the password is here. And just like that, we have a really handy tool that is drawing our attention to requests that contain that specific password. Now, that may be not be enough if you're not always looking in the history to get your attention. So you may want to do something else depending on what your needs are. And of course, there are a large number of additional actions. You can force, you know, for example, an intercept. I believe this is, um, this forces an, an intercept in the proxy. Uh, of course, there are a number of other thens uh, that could be helpful as well. Um, the log there doesn't show that that action applied, but that's okay. Um, we, uh, I, I'm guessing this is maybe just more for debugging purposes. Um, it worked first try as intended. Uh, I think it's probably uh, a, a very helpful tool in certain situations. Uh, if you're like me, you've definitely run into situations where Burp's built-in match in replace uh, has just not cut it and you've had to find weird workarounds. Uh, this tool can probably handle a lot of those cases. You can also set a condition for whether or not the request is actually in scope, which is one of the things that was missing from Burp's match and replace. Although I think as of a recent update, that was recently implemented. And of course, you know, the, the vanilla Burp um, tools are improving all the time. Uh, but nevertheless, it's uh, a great extension and I'm sure you can find a use case for it.